I am Tsutomu Yamaguchi, and my life is a tale of extraordinary resilience in the face of unimaginable horrors. I was born on March 16, 1916, in Nagasaki, Japan, and my life would become a symbol of survival in the aftermath of two atomic bomb explosions during World War II. The year was 1945, and the world was still engulfed in the throes of World War II. I worked for Mitsubishi Shipbuilding, and on August 6th of that year I found myself in Hiroshima on a business trip. It was a day that seemed like any other, with the sun rising in the sky, casting its warm glow over the city. Little did I know that this day would be etched into my memory as the most unforgettable and life-altering event. The morning sun gave way to a blinding whiteness that seemed to outshine even the sun itself. In an instant, the peaceful city of Hiroshima was transformed into a scene of apocalyptic destruction. The sky ignited with a brilliant light that bore no resemblance to anything known in this world. A shockwave, fires, and absolute devastation swept through the city streets. The scale of this chaos was beyond human comprehension. Yet through what seemed like sheer luck to me, I survived the explosion in Hiroshima, even though my body bore the scars of that earlier blast. The scenes I witnessed that day would forever be seared into my memory. The wounded and the dying filled makeshift hospitals, their cries of pain and despair becoming a constant backdrop to this macabre tableau. It was a grotesque spectacle of suffering that I could not fathom. The effects of radiation exposure began to manifest. Those who had initially survived the blast now fell victim to the insidious aftermath of radiation sickness. The human body seemed defenseless against this invisible foe, atomic radiation. For me, the physical pain was compounded by the emotional scars left by those two fateful days. I lost many friends and colleagues in the bombings, and the memories of their faces and voices haunted my dreams. Survivor in Hash 39, guilt weighed heavily on my conscience as I questioned why I had been spared when so many others had perished. Despite the devastation and despair that surrounded me, a sense of determination began to take root. Those of us who had survived shared a common mission, to rebuild our lives and our city. It was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a belief that even in the face of unfathomable adversity, we could find a way forward. As I boarded the train bound for Nagasaki, I did so with a heavy heart and a body still bearing the wounds of the Hiroshima explosion. My thoughts oscillated between the desire to reunite with my family and the worry for their safety in a world ravaged by war. Little did I know, fate had a cruel twist in store for me, placing me once again in the midst of unimaginable tragedy. Initially, the train journey proceeded without significant incidents. The rhythmic clatter of wheels against tracks created a hypnotic atmosphere and the landscape outside passed by in slow motion. The world beyond the windows appeared peaceful, almost untouched by the chaos that had engulfed Hiroshima just days earlier. As the train approached Nagasaki, a city I had always known for its beauty and history, the illusion of tranquility was shattered in an instant. It was August 9th, 1945, and the sun hung high in the sky, casting its radiance upon the landscape below. Suddenly, Without warning, it happened again. A blinding flash of light filled the horizon, brighter and more ominous than anything I had ever seen before. The world convulsed with a powerful tremor, and I was thrown from my seat as the train cars derailed. In that fateful moment, I found myself for the second time in just three days at the epicenter of an atomic blast, this time in the heart of Nagasaki. The world crumbled around me as the second atomic bomb unleashed its terrifying power. Buildings were reduced to rubble in a matter of seconds, and fires erupted with a voracious appetite for destruction. As I struggled to collect my thoughts, I could feel the searing heat on my skin, a painful reminder of the inferno that had consumed Hiroshima. The destruction unfolding before my eyes exceeded human imagination, and the city that was once known for its historical significance was now a landscape of utter devastation. This time my injuries were even more severe. My body bore the marks of the explosion, burns and shrapnel wounds, a painful testimony to the violence of this blast. My clothing was reduced to tatters and my hair fell out in clumps due to radiation exposure. In the midst of this apocalyptic scene, 
I could barely believe that I had once again survived the aftermath of an atomic explosion. It was as if fate had chosen me yet again to bear witness to the darkest aspects of human capacity for destruction. The days that followed the Nagasaki bombing were a nightmare. The injured and the dying filled makeshift hospitals, their cries of pain and despair providing a haunting soundtrack to the city and Hash 39's destruction. The effects of radiation exposure began to manifest, and those who had initially appeared unscathed now succumbed to the insidious effects of radiation sickness. Nagasaki, like Hiroshima before it, had been forever altered. The world had once again witnessed the horrors of nuclear warfare in the span of just a few days, and the implications that accompanied it were overwhelming. It was a fact that no one could ignore, a stark reminder of the consequences of unchecked aggression. In the aftermath of the Nagasaki bombing, I found myself once again facing physical and emotional scars from these pivotal days. I had now survived two atomic bomb blasts, experiences that defied all human imagination and challenged the essence of my existence. Nevertheless, amid the devastation and despair, a glimmer of hope began to emerge. Those of us who had survived shared a common mission, to rebuild our lives and our city. It was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a belief that even in the face of unimaginable adversity, we could find a way forward. In the years that followed, I grappled with the physical and emotional aftermath of the bombings. The scars on my body served as a constant reminder of the violence I had witnessed, while the memories of those harrowing days continued to haunt my thoughts. Yet, life had more in store for me. I married and had children, finding solace and purpose in the simple joys of family and community. The laughter of my children and the embrace of my wife provided a balm for my wounded spirit, a reminder that life, despite its hardships, could still be filled with moments of happiness and love. It was during this time that I began to transform from a survivor into an advocate. The world had witnessed the horrors of nuclear warfare, and it was a reality that could not be ignored. I felt a deep sense of responsibility to share my experiences, to ensure that the world understood the consequences of unchecked aggression. I became a vocal proponent of nuclear disarmament, speaking at conferences and events to convey the urgency of the issue. My message was simple yet profound. We must abolish these weapons of mass destruction before they annihilate us all. The devastation I had witnessed firsthand was a stark reminder of the terrible cost of war, and I was determined to do everything in my power to prevent others from experiencing the horrors I had faced. As the years passed, I watched the world change around me. The specter of nuclear destruction continued to loom large as nations grappled with the responsibilities of wielding such destructive power. My story, however, transcended borders and generations, serving as a powerful reminder of the devastating consequences of conflict and the urgent need for diplomacy and cooperation among nations. My name is Tsutomu Yamaguchi, and my life in Hash 39's journey is a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. It is my fervent hope that my story will continue to inspire future generations to strive for a world free from the horrors of nuclear weapons and war.